Okay, shall we? Yeah, so good afternoon, everyone. Um, I hope you enjoy my fancy slide deck from today. I'm kind of proud of that. <laughs> so, good afternoon, and as you might read on my background, this is a presentation of the first stable, or sort of stable, lib camera release, and we are here today to present a bit of the API we came, we came up with, and start the requirement for a public review that will um, take place, start tomorrow, there will be a meeting tomorrow morning, and so yeah, let's start. So a bit of introduction of the project, if you have not heard about that before, we start one year ago, so we are very young. We are a group of team core developers. We are led by Laurent. We started the project uh, one year ago and kick-started all this adventure. And we are at the point now where we are targeting devices where that support as mail, close as, mail, as mail and as possible kernels because that we would like to encourage vendors, if not force them, to stay as close as mail and as possible. And we depend on features which has been integrated in recent kernel versions. Currently, we support uh, a limited but increasing number of platforms. Uh, we started with uh, Intel uh, CPU, which feature an IPO3 ISP. We then moved to uh, an embedded rock chip device, which is an ARM device, the RK3399. We have in the pipeline support from the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi 3 and 4, which are currently not there yet, not mainline uh, in LibCamera, but we're working on that with the uh, Raspberry Pi Foundation guys. We have support, of course, for UVC cameras, because that's what you find on most laptops. And we use extensively the VMC test driver for all test infrastructure. We are looking for new platforms, new devices to expand the scope of lib camera, new use cases. So if you're a vendor, if you're a camera producer, get in touch with us, and we will be happy to talk with you. This is just context for reference. We have a website, which has been updated this week. We have an IRC room where you can talk with us if you want to. We have Git repository, which has been is hosted Linux TV, and we have a mailing list where all the development happens, and, but you can get in touch and ask questions there if you want to. We've been around this year. We've been an all major conference, basically, and this talk, uh, we, I just have 35 minutes, so I cannot go in great length and explain all the motivation that led to uh, the, concep the conception of lib camera, but I uh, collected here a few references on the, all the presentation we gave this year. Uh, Laurent on this very stage, well, not this very one, it was Edinburgh one year ago, kickstarted the project presenting the motivation. Um, I've been in Fosdem a few months later presenting the first support for the, the support for the plat first platform we supported at the time. Kieran has been in Bangkok in April and presented support for the second platform. And finally, uh, Laurent has been again in Japan on stage presenting the support for the, the first support for the Android camera all. Unfortunately, I find no reference of the video, but there are slides around. And today I'm here again to present the public API that it's, it's the outcome of all this journey, that it's one year long journey so far. I'm not going in great length into that, but a bit of background. Uh, we come from a world that it was much simpler than what we have today. So we came from a world that SOC didn't have much computational power on the um, ISP side. So all the image processing was done mostly on the sensor. Uh, SOC is a receiving port that was parallel at the time, maybe CSI2 and the DMA engine and the abstraction to user space was a simple, uh, simple was a single dev video zero and all application went through that to control the capture pipeline. There was an abstraction, libv4l, and we had application that could natively talk with uh, lib, uh, v4l2 uh, APIs or use libv4l lib abstraction. Nowadays, the world is much complex than that, much more complex than that. So we see, we've seen a big increase in computational power on the SOCs, specifically not on the ISP side. So this part here of the SOC is, get, is becoming more powerful, uh, can do a lot of more things, and that means that sensor on the other side could be simplified and could, are meant to do what a sensor is supposed to do, so capture great images, 
maybe in a format which can be uh, later processed by the ISP itself. We have seen an increasing number of DMA engines, much more complex hardware infrastructure, and Vida for Linux has had to evolve to keep uh, the pace of with this evolution. So we have seen the introduction of the media controller API that was like 10 years ago. And that led to an explosion of uh, user space components. So now we have video devices, we have video sub devices, we have the media controller to control linking and setting up, set up of the pipeline. That requires a lot of tuning in user space. That requires application to know a lot about the platform. And everybody is doing that a little bit differently with uh, scripts, with custom application. And so we were, we're missing a piece there. We're missing a piece that provides a unified uh, interface for application to interact with the camera instead of dealing with single video nodes, single video devices, media links, and all of that. So that's the motivation for Lib Camera, and this is just an, a very simple, um, a very simple picture of the stack that we have uh, we have imagined at the time. So we have a Lib Camera at the bottom of the stack, and on top of that we have several abstraction layer. We have a uh, Vida for Linux 2 compatibility layer to guarantee that application that used to work with libv4l keep working with libcamera. We will see the first cup drop for the compatibility layer probably next week, and we're very excited about that. We will have abstractions like GStreamer elements for that, which are in the pipeline for the next month, and we want to keep working on that. We will provide language bindings so far, libcamera is C++, and we provide the C++ interface for that, but we imagine to provide Python bindings and other languages bindings. And as of now, we have a libcamera, an Android camera compatibility layer, which so far supports the limited device mode, but we want to bring that to support per frame control before the end of the year in the next month. And of course, there might be application that uses each of this abstraction layer and also lib camera native components that will use the API that I'm here to present today. When speaking about the API, we have several API actually. We have an API towards public, into public application, uh, uh, which is the lib camera public API up there. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. But we also have internal, internal API one towards the device agnostic part of libcamera and the platform specific part. Libcamera requires an adaption layer to the platform, of course, to take care of uh, dealing with media devices, video node links, and, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And we have an internal API for that. We also have an internal API for another component which is essential in the design of libcamera, which is the, what we call the, the image processing algorithm, or IPA. These are components that are meant to be run in isolated mode or integrated with libcamera to give vendors space to implement um, 3A tuning algorithm in an isolated way um, from libcamera. And that we have an IPC-based um, protocol that's gonna be presented and discussed tomorrow again. Uh, today we're gonna just present the libcamera public API, so if you're a camera uh, application developer, that's what you should care about. So, I got this wonderful slide deck available here. Uh, to present this talk, we wrote a very simple and over-commented application, which I think it's useful to give a grasp of the API we have, which is available here. And the rest of the presentation, which I hope it will fit in 25 minutes, it's live coding on an application. So I hope that not to screw up that too much. And let's move to live coding, or if you have any question on this introductory part. Okay. So I would like to present you how easy it is to write an application for libcamera. Uh, I'm cheating a bit and I'm starting with um, like a skeleton application with just comments. We'll go through all of them. And a simple main function, so we're running its, its C++ directly on the C++, C++ API. And I used to import a you know, standard C++ header and few headers that are required from libcamera. It's the only libcamera.h include uh, including directive and the DRM4CC for uh, the, the image formats. 
So the first concept the libcam represents to the application developers is the camera manager. Camera manager is a single entity in, the, in your application and camera manager runs uh, and basically creates and lists all the camera that it found in the systems. As I've said, libcamera is a concept of pipeline manager, which is device-specific abstraction, and the pipeline manager, it's matched against all the media entities that it finds on the system and creates camera parsing all the video devices that it founds. So the first thing that, if you are writing an application for libcamera, the first thing that you have to do is, of course, to create a new camera manager. Right? And of course the camera manager needs to be started and that leads to enumerating all the cameras in the system. I would like to give you, I should have prepared that. It's better in white, right? Okay. So I would like to give you, to compile the application and also give you a brief run of what happened there. So when you run the first, when you start libcamera, it will simply present the version, but behind the curtain something happens, and if we expand the log levels, we see that when we start the uh, camera manager, all the pipelines that we have registered gets uh, like queried in the systems, and each of them registers some cameras. So we see that we all go through all the pipelines that we support at the moment, UVC, VMC, IPU3, and Rockchip, and one of them matches with the system that I, the application is running and creates a camera from the dev media zero. Just an example, if I load the VIMC um, test driver, if I, and I run the application again, we'll see that an additional camera gets created, right? Because that, we have a new media device, we have a new camera in the system, and libcamera knows about that and creates a camera for you. So it's possible from the camera manager to get a list of cameras, and just an example. Uh... Say again? Yeah. I didn't want to make clear that I have no idea of C++, but... Camera plural. Cameras, yes. Thank you, that's collective coding, I like that. So if you run the application here, maybe decrease the log level to make it less confusing. We see that now we have two cameras. The camera found the cameras for you. So there is no need to go on the media device, query all of them, query the video nodes. We, the, all the API revolves a single concept, which is the camera concept. But what is a camera actually for libcamera? Camera is a collection of streams. Streams are pixels which are produced by processing image stream from a single image source. In the most simple case, a camera, a camera is a single stream. So there is no processing involved in that. But depending on the platform capability, you can have a multiple number of streams. That just depends on what your platform could do. A simple and reasonable example is that you have a single image source like a sensor, and that goes through the ISP and provides you three different streams. One maybe is the main capture one, one is the viewfinder, so it provides you a scaled down image to do the viewfinding, and one is still captured that maybe does video stabilization and other advanced feature for you to capture images from that. It's possible to list the streams from a camera with uh, this simple API, but the most interesting part about streams is how you configure them, because configure a camera is a tricky operation, because it boils down to uh, basically allocating the resources of the systems to each of the streams that you are interested in using. Uh, think about the platform with a single scaler, and you want to configure two streams, both to use the scaler, that might not be possible, and the, platform should prevent you from doing that or providing a, you a configuration which you are guaranteed to be, uh, that's possible to be used on the camera. So in order to configure a camera, we have a very simple API here as well, which is called generate configuration. So let's try to call it, config is a unique pointer, which is camera. Did I get the camera? No. Yeah. 
So first of all, we need to get a camera, and we have listed all of them, but I want just to take the first one. So camera, it's equal CM cameras. And we take the simple one, the first one, because it's simpler. Uh, we need to acquire a camera before being able to use that. Cameras again. Acquiring a camera means that I lock the use of that camera specific for my application. So no other application could uh, query that camera and use that while my application is using that. So now that we have created a camera, and I hope it's still compiled. Camera. Where's that? Oh, yep. So now that I have created a camera, I could simply generate a configuration for that. Generate a configuration, as I've said, is based on the concept of a stream row. So I don't ask configuration for camera specifying, I want this on this size, I want this on this size, or pixel formats. I specify configuration for a camera, saying I want the stream to use as a viewfinder, I want the stream to use it for still capture. Of course, it's up to the platform specific part to, uh, to let you, uh, to give you back a configuration that supports what you ask, if it's possible to do that on the, on the platform you are using. So, Right now we have a UVC camera, it's a simple camera, so we can only ask for a single, um, for a single stream role, and for simplicity we're gonna ask a viewfinder role. So you can specify as many elements as you want, reasonably of course, the camera will give you, up, give you back a configuration which is guaranteed to be usable. Does it compiles? Yes. So right now, as we said, the camera is composed by streams, right? So each camera configuration is a collection of stream configuration. For each of them, we could uh, tune a set of parameters like size, like pixel format. But before we can use that, let's take a stream configuration from the config we just generated. Zero. We have a single stream, so we take the first. It's a news. It's fine. It's possible if you want to if you want to print out the configuration that has been returned by lib camera. That's the default configuration that you have for for the stream that you asked. Okay. So the, by default, I get back a configuration viewfinder mode which has this size and this format. I can go and tune the configuration as much as I like. I can change the sizes. That's pretty trivial stuff, right? Or even the pixel form. Yep. I'll change that. Or even the pixel format. And V12. So for each stream which I receive a stream configuration for, I go and set parameters specifically for that stream. If I print them out, if it compiles again, I get the configuration which is changed. Of course, this can be done wrong. I mean, I can ask for configuration which are not supported by the camera, and I cannot apply a configuration which is not supported to a camera, right? So we have an additional step, which is called configuration validation. So each camera configuration is self-validating. When you, have, a, when you have, set, have set up all configuration that you want for each streams that you have required, you go through a th single step, which is called config that validate, validate. Okay, config validate. If we print the stream after the validation, the stream configuration after validation, you see, we have required for a stream configuration which is not supported, zero, it's not a valid value for a stream size. Validation adjusts that to the closest possible configuration which is guaranteed to be supported by the camera. So now that we have gone through that, if I ask a configuration that it's supported, it's not gonna be changed, hopefully. Okay. 
okay? If the configuration is valid, it's not gonna be changed. If it's not valid, it's gonna be changed to you and what you got back, it's guaranteed to work on the camera that you have configured. So with a validated configuration, we can now go and configure the camera. That's unique pointer, so I need to do that. Say again, sorry? I, I cannot hear you. No. Just asking if there was a difficulty and that's why you're printing the 4CC, the DRM4CCs in hex instead of strings. The DR, why we use DRM4CC? Well, it's the DRM4CC, but in your debug, you print it in hex. So oh, well, it's, it's ju it, we just need a conversion table from the numerical value to the, the, to okay, the, so to to the predefined name. That's nothing more than that. Yeah, we'll keep that so you can pass that around. So now we have configured the camera with a set of stream configuration. That means that now the camera knows how many streams you should provide you, what are day sizes, day formats. So it means that the camera now knows about the memory that we'll need to allocate for you to all to all, all the image data from the stream that you have required. So we have a simple uh, allocation step. Allocate buffers and reverse operation, which is release buffer. You don't have to do anything more than that. The camera will take care of, uh, as a configuration, as be configured, it knows how many memory and buffer needs to allocate for you, and from this point on, the camera is ready to uh, provide, uh, provide uh, image data to you. So I would like just to show you very quickly that we have a very nice documentation. I know it's not fair that I say that, but, and the camera has a very specific state machine that, uh, show you what you could do or you could not do at any specific step of the configuration process. So once you have configured the camera, you can allocate buffers on that and you gonna you enter the prepare state. From that state, it's where we can start actually to require frame from the camera. How do you require frame from the camera, lib camera? Lib camera has a concept which is the concept of request, which is not and is not is nothing new. We have a request API in V4L, we have other camera stacks that has the concept of requests. A uh, request is nothing but a set of buffers which are created by streams uh, which uh, you are asking to be filled with image data. Uh, request also has a set of controls associated with each request and controls mapped conceptually to V4L2 controls, so are tunable knobs that let you specify the brightness, the exposure, or other tunable parameters of, um, of your image capture process. Uh, a camera is fed with requests and return your requests once they are completed. So a request is completed once all, it, all the buffer it contains have been filled with data. So we start simply by preparing a, a vector of buffer of request. In order to fill the pipeline, the camera pipeline, you know, uh, each camera has a pipeline depth. So you will have to fill up up to four buffer to a camera in order to have it start streaming. Uh, we need to prepare enough requests to fill the pipeline of our camera and queue all of that before the camera start producing frames. So we create this vector. We need a stream because the stream is where you create buffer from. And we got that from the stream configuration, stream config, and we got a stream from there. Right, and from the stream configuration, we know the pipeline depth. So, buffer count. Good, so that's the depth of our camera pipeline, and from there we can start creating requests. So requests are created from the camera and are associated with buffers which come from a stream. So our request, it's created from a camera, create a request. A buffer, which is a unique pointer, 
get created from a stream. Uh, create buffer. So the buffer API are under rework a bit, but so far you have two ways to create buffers from your camera, uh, from your stream. So you can ask the buffer to give you a buffer with a specific index if you want the memory to be allocated from the camera, or you could provide the buffer a set of uh, DMA buff FDs if you are importing buffer from external, for, from external allocation, which is one of the main use cases for camera nowadays. Now we have asked the camera to locate buffers for us, so we asked each stream to create buffers for uh, with, a, uh, with a specific index. We simply provide the buffer to the request, and once the request has all the buffers it needs, we just need to, we just queue that to, uh, it's pointer, push back, we'll get that. Uh, push back, new request. Say again, it's good. So let's make sure it still compiles. It doesn't. Stream config is a pointer. Where is that? It's not a pointer. Good. So to sum up the steps again, I create a request from a camera. I feed it with all the buffers I want to be filled in with image data, and I add the request, and I add those buffers to the request. Uh, I'm not showing that here because the, it's, I don't, basically don't have time to do so, but we could take a vector of controls from the request and start tuning parameters there. We have uh, an API which is based on the set and get operation on, the, on, on a class which is called control list. So you simply have a list and you say, control list, I want this, the brightness of my stream to be 250, 255, or I want exposure to have this or this level. Each, cam, each request has a set of controls, and it, controls are applied nowadays. We don't have anything like the request API for, uh, for capture devices, but as, as we move toward that model, uh, controls can be applied specifically for each request. So now we have prepared a buffer of requests, so we have filled the pipeline depth of our camera, and we expect then to receive callback, right? When the request is completed, when uh, we have images which are available and we want to display them to user or do whatever the application wants to do with that, we expect the camera to provide a callback. So the model that Lib Camera uses to uh, register and provide notification of events to application is a signal slot model, much inspired by the Qt toolkit. Uh, a signal is nothing but an event, which is emitted by a class instance like a camera, and the slot is nothing but a callback that could be registered to handle that signals. It's nothing but a flexible and fancy way to implement callbacks. Um, a camera exposed three signals at the moment, one that allows you to know when a single buffer is completed, and that's very useful if you want to do partial request completion, more advanced use cases, and one signal, which is the one that is called request complete, that means that all the buffer in the request has been filled with data and the associated metadata which have been produced by the capture operation. So in order to do that, we have to prepare a callback, and since I'm lazy, I'm gonna copy the prototype of the callback from the documentation. It's a static void callback. Uh, request complete. It's gonna take a request, that's the request that has completed, and gonna take a map of buffer, of stream to buffers, that all the buffers that, that contain the data that have, we have requested for. So once I do have a callback like this one, I can simply go there and connect that with, to the camera request complete signal. So camera, it has a signal which is called request complete completed, and I could connect that with my request complete callback. So that means that every time all the buffers in my request have been filled with data, the application has the request complete callback invoked. It compiles, yes, I'm surprised. <laughs> so looking a bit at the camera state machine again, we have been creating requests and um, preparing the camera with connect, by connecting the signal uh, to prepare for receiving data. 
And now we are in the prepare state and we can move to a state which is called running state. That means that the camera, it's actually what, if you know about the video for Linux terminology, that's the star stream operation basically. Um, so that's very simple to do and we have a single, single operation for that which is called start, it's also have a counterpart, which is a stop, of course. But once the camera is in a running state, we can start queuing a request to that. So for all auto requests that we have prepared in, in our request vector, we simply queue a request to the camera. Queue request R. Does it still compile? Good something happens. So we start the camera, the camera is running, is ready to provide the frames to you, you start queuing requests to the camera, that's an interactive process. And of course I removed that and I've not been smart in doing that. We need an event loop. Lib camera provides you facility to integrate your application, to integrate with your application event loop, event loop the glib event loop, the Qt event loop, or gives you an easy way to uh, create an event loop which is, which is realized by pulling a set of file descriptors, the video device file descriptor usually. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna copy that. It's three lines of code, but that's easy as that. So we run an event loop for three seconds. For three seconds, I just say, I want to receive all the events that lib camera, uh, the lib camera provides me, so like frame completion. I do expect during this, this um, three seconds to receive callback to this function here, one for each frame, for each, cap for, e for each capture request that I've queued to the camera. So request completed. And if we try to run that, hopefully, I should receive four frames back, right? So for three seconds, I receive four frames. But I just have four requests, and what should I do when I complete a request? The, because after, after that, I cannot start queuing requests. Um, when a request complete, requests and buffers are transient objects, so you can use them as throwaway objects and queue new requests to the camera as much as you need them. So when a request completes, simply you can queue a new one doing the same thing we have been doing before. So we create a new request from the camera, where do I get the camera from? Sorry. Oh, well, the camera is global. Uh, so I have a camera, which I could create a new request from the camera. And for each buffer which has completed, uh, buffers, I could simply get the stream from the buffers array. Uh, buffers first. B? Yes, sorry. Thank you. I got a buffer back, which is the new B. No. I'm using too many Bs. Buffer. Buffer. B it's equal buffer dot second. And I want to have an index because I the if the request number E has just completed, I can recur request with the same index. And sign int E, it's equal B index. So I now need to create a new a new buffer. Again, it's a transient object. So I need to create a new one associated with the index E and queue that again to the camera. So I got a unique pointer. For a new buff, and it's simply stream, create a buffer for me with index E. And now again, I can go and queue the request, queue the buffer to the request, add the buffer to the request. New move, new buff. Once I'm done with that, for all the buffers that I have been completed in the request, I can queue that again to the camera. Queue request R. Does it compile? Yeah, sort of. Because you 
URS and not stream. And if I run that again, I expect to receive frame completion, no, request completion notices for all the stream that, for all the requests that I've been queuing for all the, the time that I've run the, the event loop. So that's easy as that, which is pretty intuitive. And to show that I don't cheat, I'm not cheating, I do have like 10 minutes I could store a buffer to the disk and show you to that. But if you have a question, I would, I would prefer to do something more interactive than that. And if you trust me that uh, I'm actually capturing images, uh, I'm not going to do that. So if you have a question, I would prefer to do something more interactive. Go ahead, please. Hello? Okay. <laughs> Sounds better. Uh, do we actually need to create a new request every time? Could we just requeue the same request again? Uh, the, the fact is that a request is created with a set of controls. And when a request complete, it has a set of metadata <coughs> associated. So if you reuse the same one, there is a mechanism. If you don't change any controls, you can maybe reuse the same one, I would say but it's easy and cheap to create a new request every time from the camera. They, trans they throw away objects. So it depends actually what you want to do with them. Okay. Uh, and I guess we don't need to free the request, or do we? This one. So you would like to, to reuse the request that you had No, but you just allocated the new request, right? So do we need to do something to the old one? No, uh, do you mean you, can, you could reuse this one? Yeah, but, but you, like, if you don't reuse it, do you need to free it? No, it's deleted after the callback completes. Oh, okay. The lib okay. camera core, once the callback completes, delete the request and the, all the metadata that you have not used for, the, for you. So okay. it's not that you do that manually. It's no need for that. Okay, perfect. Thanks. In future, the more complex scenario like uh, stereo camera with, okay, that requires synchronization would be considered in the uh, in camera? Stereo camera with multiple sensors. Multiple sensors that be seen, um, with request must be synchronized. Yeah. Be. You could create requests. That, that depends on the platform support, of course. But here you could create, in a, you could associate two, buff, two different buffers to a request. One may be for viewfinder, and you keep queuing that to the camera. But at a certain point, you want to capture a stream, and you, you, create, you associate a buffer for the still capture use case. So the request will complete with two buffers, one from viewfinder, one for still ima capture image. And the same is for stereo camera. Depends how your pipeline support exposed that. You could receive a buffer with uh, the both sensors uh, presented as one, or two different buffers that you could merge into a single one. Depends actually on the use case. Maybe the other lib camera people has different ideas on that, or. Uh, mm, mm, in my scenario, there is two sensor, so two camera. I want I want to synchronize the two camera with, with one request because I have a very short uh, time uh, time constraints. Okay. Yeah. Thank, thank or you. you can or you can do something like create a pipeline handler that exposes a single camera for two sensors and do the synchron synchronization inside the pipeline handler. That's up to the platform support that you want to expose. Conceptually, if you have a stereo camera and the stream is composed by two frames that comes from two different sensors, you and you would like to expose that a single camera, so you, you need a single request with a buffer made of two images. You could do that in the pipeline and in the device-specific part of the camera without changing the API to, towards the application. If your device uh, synchronizes the two sensors that Uh, is there support for 
other than image data in the buffers, uh, stuff like serial numbers and timestamps? Yeah, if that um, is I could show that. We can print them out. That, that's the full application. I'm not showing that. But you have all the information which you would receive from the V4L2 layers, and the, the, that's the very basic information, like the timestamp and the buffer number, and associated with that, a list of metadata, which tells you the exposure and whatever controls have been applied to the image that has been captured. Again, that depends on the platform. On a UVC camera, we got no metadata, of course. If your platform provides you metadata from the sensor or from the ISP, you will find all of them in the request. The request has the method which is called metadata or control list, I don't remember, and gives you back all the metadata associated with the image. If I run that again, do I have buffer here? No, I need to do that in... Uh, well, I will show that just because we, you asked for that, but it's nothing surprising. Yeah, where's that? One, two, three. Oh, one, oh, oh, wow, okay. Yeah, almost. 19, buffer was not declared. Where is 19? Oh, sorry. Yeah, and you got all the basic information that you got from the video device, like the bytes used and the sequence number, the timestamp, and whatever. Other questions? Uh, going back to the configuration model, uh, do you provide some hints about resolutions, uh, formats, or do you have to trial and error? No, well, the validation part, it's, a tri it's basically a tribe-based interface. You, know, you, you try a configuration, you validate that, it gives you back a validated one. And what we thought about the hints, the generate configuration part, it basically gives you a template, right? So you ask for a viewfinder on your platform, the pipeline and the ship provides you a configuration which it thinks is suitable for a viewfinder use case. So it doesn't make sense to provide you a huge frame in MV12. Uh, probably will provide you a YUV or whatever in a smaller resolution. So templates are, in, are uh, implemented through the role abstraction, and it's up to the pipeline to provide you as much roles as, it, as, it, as you, it could. We could go to a phase action. Well, in the well in the stream configuration, indeed. Can you read that? Yeah, done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, hence. Yeah. That's why I was asking for hints. <laughs> um, the RM modifiers? Not yet. Okay. <laughs> uh, stride adaptation. Okay. No. Stride? Just stride? Okay. So the MABUF import is kind of not working, yeah. right? Okay. Uh, what else? Well, there's the offset, but that's the same thing again. Okay. Someone else? Just a quick clarification. So when you go to the, yes, that. If you would remove the uh, setting the configuration completely, would yes. you get would you get a default uh, values back based on the role? So for a full for a viewfinder, it would be small. For the still camera picture, it would be uh, best that the, yep. that the hardware can do. Yeah, th that's quite yes. <laughs> so the, depending on the roles, you got the template back. So I, can, I don't need to go and tune the configuration if I don't want to. So if we, without going to the capture part, I'm not setting any configuration now, but you see that if I print that out, I got these values here without doing any configuration myself. Probably, I'm not sure if UVC supports that, but if I ask for a different row, I'm, I'm being adventurous here, it might not work. <laughs> That's the same one, this platform. 
So depending on that, that's that that part is interesting. I, I'm not sure if I show that. That's well, that's maybe C++, but that's a virtual method, the validation, because that goes down to the pipeline handler. That's specific to the device. So depending on the constraint of the device, the validation takes care of the platform constraint that gives you back a template for that. So in that case, UVC gives you back the same, the same sizes for capture and viewfinder on the IP3 that will give you a very small frame for uh, viewfinder and a big one for, uh, for still capture in different image formats. Uh, another question. Does libcamera deal with things like encoding? Like if we wanted to encode into an H.264 stream? Codec. Yeah, like codec. Nah, and, that, okay. it's out of scope for the project, I guess. That's, we got a discussion about memory to memory devices, actually, because that's something which is close to cameras, not exactly cameras, not exactly ISPs. So there's nothing preventing you for ad support for that to libcamera, but it's not the main target of the project. Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you're interested in that. <laughs> yes, possibly. Any other question over there? Could you pass the mic, please? Yeah. Is there any image processing support? Is there any? Image processing support? Image processing. Yeah, so say if you wanted to flip the image or something like that. Well, you, of, of course, if the ISP provides you the capability to do that, to do that. Like, much like you, if you have like a VFL2 controls and you set VFlip or HFlip controls, you can send a request with the control flip, vertical or horizontal, and depending on the platform capabilities, uh, do you will get, get, get back a flipped image. On a UVC camera, of course, you have to do that in software because there's nothing doing that in, or, or maybe there is. Yeah, but if your ISP provides something it controls for doing that, you can set easy set the control on that request, and you get a flipped image back. Thank you. Which is this part here, basically. Uh, we are growing the control part, so we're very interested in knowing the use cases that people have in mind, because we are based on the control which are defined by Vita for Linux, but for image processing, they are full short for many use cases. So knowing that you need to turn your image of 40, 40, 45 degrees and rotate that, it's interesting for adding new control and supporting new use cases for us. Just uh, another question about control. Is it possible in, uh, to have uh, to set control um, to evaluate uh, the control value lazy? Uh, for example, for video stabilization, you do set uh, some parameter when the request is handled, not when it's issued to to the camera. When the request is sent, yeah. you in QA request, yeah. but you know the value, the correct value for that control only when you evaluate, you have processed the previous frame, so you can uh, set the control when you enqueue the request. So you mean so apply, you apply need apply to a delay to a control? Yeah, basically. you have a lazy evaluation of, uh, the, part of the control as, as soon as the, um, the request is, uh, is executed. It is applied to the camera. Yeah. So if you want to apply a delay, we don't have nothing like a delay. No, a delay control. or just um, yeah, imagine the case in my scenario, it's typical video stabilization problem. So I evaluate the, uh, the previous one, two frame, and decide that the next frame has uh, a shift, lateral shift, lateral cropping of three, mm. three pixels. But I, I, went, I already prepared the buffer because I have a very tight um, uh, very tight time constraints, so I can wait for a uh, buffer allocation or something like that. Mm -hmm. So I want only to adjust uh, the last parameters, like a uh, cropping area of sensor okay. or something like that. Yeah. And also, when you set them later. Then. Yeah. The question is, 
k, but uh, in queuing the queue can be a, a quite long operation. So, I'm in case of uh, in that transformation problem, I have uh, two milliseconds for in queuing request, uh, elaborate that, and we're taking your case. Okay, my thing is yes, P. Okay. So, and pay attention, you mentioned buffer allocation. This one here is not allocation, actually. So it's not expensive in terms that you have to allocate memory. If the pipeline is done right, so you don't have to do remapping inside, that's basically just queuing a buffer, which is an expensive operation, okay. basically. It's expensive, but not expensive as allocating that. So, so far, the later time you can modify requests is when you queue that. But that's something that we should, could think about. Okay. Where is that going to happen, Hans? Where is that going to happen? Uh, it's in the Azure uh, as a Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So I, I think we're running out of time. I will, I will keep the discussion, but that, that means that we are uh, skipping the, the, the breakout session. So. Feel free to get in touch. If you have platforms that you would like to be supported by Leap Camera, you know where to find us. And if you have more interesting use cases, we will be very interested to know about them. Thank you.